J Boogie back with another video today on this super official Saturday. Today I will be talking about the adjustments for the Dallas Mavericks on what they need to do to secure the W in tonight's game for game two of the NBA Finals. So pretty much in game one, Celtics pretty much destroyed them, dominated them throughout the whole game. Um, that's due to Porzingis having scoring 20 points in the first half, and he pretty much set that tone. So for tonight, I feel like for the Mavericks, offensively, you know, I had, excuse me, I had drawn on my own with a few plays of what I've seen from them for the Timberwolves series and how they do the screen and rolls and how Luka get his shots, Kyrie get his shots, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> um, so I feel like for them in this game more than ever, it's going to be a lot of good screens, but I feel like they're going to have to really rely on these off screens because of the fact that you can get a lot of mismatches. And for the Mavericks' sake, they do have better isolation players than the, uh, than the Celtics. You got Kyrie and Luka, who are one of one of the best isolation players in the league has ever seen. So I feel like you can get these mismatches. So I feel like in this play right here, where you see where I put Luka's three-point shots and Luka's mid-range uh, hot spots and inside scoring hot spots, it's, it's always going to be in that middle. And then you see the play with the screens and stuff like that. What happens, because you can't double the Mavericks in the middle of the paint. I peeped this from Jason Kidd. It's such it's such great IQ. You cannot, you you, you don't want the double team come from the middle, because then that's when everything's getting a little bit congested. So for Luca, survey the defense, understand what's going on, and then I feel like with this play that I just posted that I made up, I feel like it will work out because then now with the isolation plays, if the double team do come for whatever reason from the Celtics, you got Kyrie open. And then if Luka drops in the paint, if the collapse is there, you got P.J. Washington already in the corner or he's on that baseline. And then you got on the weak side with the uh, screen, Derek Lively sent a screen for uh, Derek Jones Jr. Or it can be P.J. Washington, vice versa. And Luka can see that, drive in, kick it to the corner. Or he can just simply drive in, double down to Derek Lively. Once he, after he set that screen, he can roll to the basket very hard. So I feel like you have to really implement just the scout report because as good as defensive of a team the Celtics are, you still can find weak spots. So I feel like with everybody on the Celtics, you can't not like you, you just can't force Luca to play at a fast pace. So for Luca just when the mid-range shot is there, with the step back is there, with the floater, with the floater is there, he has to take that advantage. Because what you don't want is try to do too much dribbling in the paint, and then you gotta make all these tough passes. That's energy because of the fact that now they being physical, they making life tough for you in the paint. So you don't want to sit in that paint too long to make life tougher. To make, <laughs> yeah, to make life tougher for yourself. And then guys like uh, Derek Jones, God damn. <laughs> Derek Jones Jr. He cannot, he literally can't force himself driving into the paint too much unless he got the ability to finish. But he he is a good finisher. But I felt like in game when he kept trying to score on two or three people that was already there at the paint, and he really and he just didn't realistically have no chance of finishing at the rim because he kept getting these shots blocked, or he kept altering his shots to make it to where the shot was. Looking a lot, looking a lot tougher. So I feel like, uh, and I feel I know he will make better adjustments in this game because if anybody was to really rely on him, it's Mavericks because of the fact that he is a much better proven three-point shooter at anywhere on the floor, especially in that corner. Him and PJ Washington are great corner three-point shooters. So what you don't want. It should be stagnant. Both of them guys can slash at the rim too. So that's why it's emphasis to for the Mavericks to set a lot of off screens within the mid-range. Because Luka is already gonna be driving in easily at his own pace. And he got like two to three options. So I feel like 
it's really up to the bigs to set the screens with purpose. They have to because of the fact what you don't want is the subject's defense to fight over the screens a little bit too easily, reading the screen too easily, and just like, oh, we ain't got a hard head, we're going to soft edge because they pretty much already know if we ain't going to, uh, if they're not going to set the screen hard enough and roll to the basket hard enough, the subject ain't got a hard head. They're going soft edge the whole entire time. So what you don't want is that to happen. And then for guys like Kyrie, he, <laughs> hey, he didn't make any shots in game one, and he damn for sure going to make game shots in game two. <laughs> That's a bet for sure. Um, but for Kyrie, it's just unfortunate he had a lot of missed shots in game one. He didn't take no bad shots except for that one three in the corner where he saw the backboard, but we move on from that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he had his spots, you know. Um, I just feel like, like I said, he just got knocked down his threes. They kept leaving him open like he can't shoot threes, but... Hey, I'm not the Celtics fan. I'm not the Celtics defense, whatever. That, that's on them. But, <laughs> but, like I said, you know, Kyrie is going to have a much more, a much better efficient scoring out in this game. Um, you know, I'm not going. I'm not going to expect him to drop 50 or 40, but he's going to have a lot better shooting game in this game as well. Uh, I feel like, as of for Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford, especially Derek Lively, being him a rookie. Now more than ever, we learn from game one, you cannot, you cannot get in final trouble. But you are too valuable for this team on both ends of the floor, especially defensively. So I feel like for him, when Jalen Brown, especially Jalen Brown, Jalen Brown and Tatum drive in to the paint, hands up. If they body bump you, try to remain vertical because referees are very ticky tacky with these calls. So I feel like for for him, it's pretty much. I understand what the offense is trying to do, trying to get the mismatches, and I feel like the Dallas going to have to communicate a lot better if they uh when the Celtics trying to get the mismatches for Porzingis, when they're trying to get like a Josh Green guarding him, a Jaden Harden or Kyrie, anybody that's shorter or smaller than Porzingis, they're going to have to communicate when when them when them screens coming to them. So I feel like defensive communication is going to have to be a lot better in Game Two. And that's just something I'm looking forward for the Mavericks to do in Game Two is to have better defense communication. So, um, that's my take. That's my take for the adjustment for game two because I feel like these guys knock down shots, be more fluid on their offense, set a lot of off screens, uh, you know, and pretty much just take advantage of the inside shots that's wide open in the paint. Guys like Luka and Kyrie, but especially for Luka. Trying to run a little bit more locker plays. That's where them good screens comes in. That's when the movement comes in. So I expect the Mavericks to win game two tonight with a lot of adjustments, but basic adjustments, because there wasn't nothing too major that was bad from the Mavericks from game one. So that's my take on that. You like this video, like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever you got to do. I love you guys. Jay Boogie is out.